At this time, let me say good morning to uh, Professor Robertson and also we have with us uh, via Zoom this morning, Mr. Roderick Stewart. Good morning to you, gentlemen. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. And how have things been? Um, well, I'll start off. Things have been relatively quiet. Um, a lot of the signals that we have are really the side things, so Ron has a side one, I should tell you. But since the explosion on the 22nd, was it? 22nd? Yeah. Right. It's been relatively quiet, but Rod can better tell you about the seismics, what, what signals we have in and not having. Perhaps. Yeah. All right. Okay. Welcome. Okay. So, Welcome back, Mrs. Stewart. Thank you very much. Good to be back. Yeah, I mean, during all the explosions, we had a variety of these different volcanic earthquakes, the volcano tectonic, the long period, the hybrid. Since the explosion on the 22nd, we've had very, very few, just the occasional one, and they've been very small. So there's been an incredible change in, in the activity. There is a problem, from my view as a seismologist, in that it's very difficult to compare the level now with the level before the explosion started, because in, the, in January, December, part of February, when we had a, a small dome growing, the only seismic signals we saw were from the one station which was at the summit. And that station is gone now, it was destroyed in, in the eruption. So it's quite difficult to, to say if it's quieter than it was before the eruption or if it's the same level. So there may well be a, a dome growing and we can't pick up the seismicity because we would only get it near the summit. But, but overall, it's, it's been remarkable the change in, in the level of activity after that last explosion, we've gone back to um, virtually silent. Yeah, so I mean, so the, some of the stations that we were, uh, we had, and we depended on as key stations, the Wallabo station and um, a couple of the other stations, which would have had a lot more of a fix to the um, explosive events and in between, we essentially not have any events on them currently. So, yeah. but, so in that sense, it's, you could compare those, but in terms of whether or not there's actually something happening that we're not detecting seismically, because we don't have that close in station, that's that's something that, you know, hopefully, the, the plan is to, in fact, Rod is going up on a plane today to try to have a keep in the crater to see if we could confirm what we think might be happening, which is that there might be a dome growing. Um, there's a suggestion from interpreting some satellite imagery that there might be a dome there, but, you know, and, and the way in which we said the city that we don't have in the evidence suggests that that might be the case, or simply that nothing is there and it's, it's really just simply quiet. But we'll check that and we'll see. Um, I think we won't confirm until, you know, probably tomorrow or something like that. Hopefully we get a view in today and, and we'll, we'll know for sure But I don't know it's growing, and in which case sort of it, it will explain more yeah. what we are seeing. Um, and of course, we'll hope in some point in the future once it's safe to put back in a station close in. So we can start getting those closer signals again. Okay. Yeah, um, we we're, we're not ready to do that yet. No. <laughs> not <laughs> anywhere near the summit. The no, not a good idea at all. Uh, from, all right. From the yeah. first uh, explosion on the 9th of April, how many explosive eruptions we have to date? I wonder you. 32. There have yeah. been 32 distinct explosions. Maybe 31, maybe yeah. 33. At one point, they were so close together, it's difficult yeah, to tell. Yeah, yeah. We did. 32, which is, is... The first two days was like, what, like almost 20? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was it, was amazing. Amazing. it was amazing. All right. And uh, when did we first observe the increase in seismic uh, activity? I know it's sometime last year, late last year. Well, well we had, we had um, prior to the sort of the dome mm -hmm. emplacement, we've had periods when suppress had um, earthquakes. I think early last year, we had a few... And then just prior to the to the dome being observed, I think it was November, December. In November, December, December, there were some Yeah, there were some events. Yeah. But but bear in mind the network that we had in place then was um much smaller. We didn't have as much stations. So I believe then before the events happened, the, the effusive activity started, we only had probably Belmont stations. So we didn't yeah. see some earthquakes in it. But really once we put in the network, we we we, we started to have these what we call dome emplacement events, these events that was mainly picking, being picked up by the closing station, and we think was associated with the dome growth. But right. before everything, I think in the last time, it would have been, yeah. Yeah. in terms of, of 
the explosions here, we, we had a couple of VT swarms right. in advance of them, and then we went into this, this, this tremor, the banded tremor and the continuous tremor, and then the explosion started. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's strange. Time has become a bit of a blur for us. So I, <laughs> yeah. I can't actually tell you how many days it is. I'd have to go and find a bit of paper. Yeah, but the VT swarms you had, we would have recorded them on the yeah, station. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think it was early, sort of early March and then late March. We yeah. had two, and then, and then we had yeah. just, yeah. just prior to the, the explosion, we had the trouble. Yeah. Okay, we have a few backlog questions that we didn't get in for previous programs. What is the quantity of the material that the volcano has discharged as a result of the eruptions? Right. So um, we haven't we haven't precisely quantified it yet because we have to. In fact, one of the things that I'm going to be doing this week and in upcoming weeks, other colleagues will continue is simply going in the field and and looking at the deposits so that we can better quantify that. But in terms of sort of ballpark estimates, I think in total you you could start with the fact that it destroyed the 2021 dome, 2020 2021 dome, which was at the time we think about 15 cubic million cubic meters, um, and then it had a pre-existing 1979 dome, a large part of which it destroyed. Uh -huh. Using that and then um, using sort of estimates that you could get from if you have a particular eruption column and if you jet in people getting stuff through it at a certain rate, you can get an estimate of how much sort of material each explosion could give. I think we've come up with figures that are around 100 million cubic meters of material. In terms of new material, it's probably, I think, about 10 or 20 million new material. Sort of, the, you, you, the 100 comes from the pre-existing 2021 dome, what was blasted out from the 1979 dome, and the new stuff, really new, is probably only about 20 so far. Um, and those are sort of general estimates. We have to do it much more specific. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's the kind of figures. Not not as much as prior eruptions have. Just to just to bear that in mind, it's still nowhere near the well, not close to sort of 79, which was close to the 50 or 60 million, and and um, and 71. All right. A related question: Can the pyroclastic flow affect the topography of the seafloor? And lead to rip currents in places where there were there was a not there was not hitherto or before. Yeah. Sorry, can you repeat the second part of the a question? Question on WhatsApp: yeah. uh, Can the pyroclastic flows affect right. the topography of the the sea right. area or the sea floor that leads yes. to rip currents in places where there were no rip currents before? Right. That's part of the rip currents. <laughs> No, okay, the first part of the question I'll answer, as I understand. Yes, paraclastic flows affect topography of the land, first of all, but for them to affect topography in the sea, mm -hmm. I think you'll have to have a lot of a lot more material going in the sea. Currently, we don't think a lot is going in the sea, so I don't think it will affect it. So it can, but I don't think it has. Okay. The other part of the question, I'm not quite sure I understand what the person said, so I can't say I can. You understand what I'm saying? No, were, were you asking about reefs? Reefs, ah. No, it, rip, rip currents. And oh, rip currents. Rip oh, currents, sorry. yeah. <laughs> sorry. sorry. Yeah, I, I don't know about rip currents. Yeah, I, I don't have a... You, you need a lot of material, I think, yeah. ch changing the, the topography of, of the sea floor. I mean, we've had it in Montserrat where there's been many flows yeah. going into the sea pit. So far in this eruption, I, I don't think so. Yeah. yeah, you need a lot more material, yeah. essentially, and we don't take a lot of material down in the sea. You may well get more material going into the sea once we get in the harbors in the yeah. wet season. Yep. So that might change yeah. the topography. Yeah, yeah. yeah. all this stuff that is on the land is going to be part of the land. So. I, 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 but, but it's a very transient thing, because yeah. there's always currents moving them. I know that in Montserrat, the, um, there's a jetty in Plymouth that they use from time to time, and they have to keep dredging it because it keeps getting yeah. just so clogged up good. with material that's been brought down by the Mahars. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, too, is that I, I suspect that it's probably going to affect, um, if it is, um, there's, a, there's a deep trough that drops off the, the Caribbean side of the, sort of the western side of the country. There's a shelf that, that falls away quite quickly, so the, the, the bay area outside is, is quite shallow, um, I suspect. You know, you'll have to have a lot of material in today, as, as Rod said, to make an effect. And on the other side, the Atlantic side, it's sort of much more dynamic. Um, so I, 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 I'm not sure you really will have to have a lot of material to have an effect yeah. because of, of the dynamism in that side. All right. Uh, 
Morning edition of Eyeing Lassifer here on NBC Radio. We have on the program Professor Richard Robertson and uh, Mr. Roger Stewart. Is there any data from the previous eruptions, those of 1902 or 1979, and how many eruptions happened in, 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 those, in those times compared to 2021? Um, you mean in terms of individual explosions? I don't think, I don't think we would have had that detailed record. Um, the, the network that we have, and of course the wind, which is the data is collected, we essentially could determine, even without seeing it, given the signal, I guess, which almost every discrete yeah. major event, um, while... It couldn't do that in 1979, um, and certainly not in 1902. In 1902, a lot of the record is after, the scientists actually came out after the events have happened. So the, the documentation of the eruption in 1902 is much poor, very poor, um, compared to now. The, the kind of information and data we collect now is, is much richer in, in, in the volume and in quality. And certainly in terms of the explosions, even in 79, you know, have to depend on their, their visual observations yeah. more so than the seismic record, um, because the, 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 the instruments that you had were different, the wind which data is collecting was different. So, the detail that you get now would not have existed and they're possible there. Okay. You know, when we were having very frequent explosions on the ground, it just seemed like one yeah. big event. Yeah. Yeah. We couldn't really see the same discrete pulses yeah. Yeah. unless we looked at the size of the data. Yeah. Four five seven two seven zero five Magic Jack five one six three five zero nine eight nine one. Question here from WhatsApp. Good morning, uh, yeah. Professor Robertson. If you have a tank that collects rainwater by the way of spouting from the roof and some volcanic ash fell in the tank, is the water safe for washing? Right. So I think as now I'm <laughs> yeah. Um, I would suggest I would say first of all that people should the person should consult the um the various um publications out there that speak specifically about ash. But in terms of the impact that the ash should have is two main things in terms of I guess water would be the physical effect because you have a, a piece of essentially rock in the, in the material, but also the ash is usually coated in certain chemicals that might make the water slightly acidic. Right. So it might taste a little bit sour, um, but otherwise, washing, you said? Washing, washing, washing. But, not drinking, it's washing. Really, it's going to be a very dilute acid, so it shouldn't really cause yes. any major problems. All right. Another question here. Uh, the water systems such as the rivers and the streams contaminated with the sulfur or, or the, uh, the ash, is it yeah. safe to eat the fish or the, the, the life, the fish life or the river life? If, is it I, safe? Is it safe to eat the fish in the rivers after the ash? Well, uh, yeah, well, again, like what I said about the, run, about the water, I think the running water systems are even, more, are even less um, affected because... They're going to be washed out. You, you, basically, it's like you, you, you diluting that, that acid even more. So, I, you know, again, I'm not a, we're not, we're not, we're not it, but, but I would think that it shouldn't really have that much effect in, in terms of making the fish sort of um, poisonous or dangerous. But I would, I would refer that to a, um, a marine, or not marine, what is it called, a biologist? Yeah. yeah somebody like that. Um, but, but the volumes, the, the concentrations of of ash and of of acidic material in associated with ash, that in any kind of water system should be mm -hmm. not high enough to cause major harm to any kind of living organisms. And and in the case of the rain, in the case of the river, yeah. the river is moving, it's 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 washing itself all the time. So I, I suspect the effects is going to be temporary. Professor, I, I realize that person's missed you over the weekend. The questions are coming fast and furious. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope they keep coming when, when, when Ron is here. You can answer some too. So, All right. But I, I hope they come questions. All right. Mm -hmm. I am a 15 year old science student of the girls' high school. Yeah. And because I'm finding these eruptions yeah. exciting, I am beginning yeah. to look at studying yeah. volcanology. But chemistry, right. but chemistry is not my friend. What yeah. re what requirements uh, you need in this field? Right. Well, I'll let it run, tell you about the physical part, but um, I mean, it's, it's really why the people who are involved in monitoring volcanoes you have a range of skills they need. We have people here who are communications people, so if you like communicating science to people, we have people here who have to know a lot about computers and IT programming, that kind of thing. So if you enter that, 
We have people here who have to maintain stations, even to electronics, understand how components work. Mm -hmm. um, so chemistry is one of it. If you want to go into geochemistry and that kind of thing, yeah, the chemistry is important, but you might go into geology, which is more rocks. And yeah, it's, it has chemistry, but not a major deal. And also you could go into what well, Ron could tell, tell you talk endlessly about seismology, which we even encourage you probably to get into, yes. which is which is more. Um, well, you can tell a large part of what we do is we actually call geophysics. Yeah. Seismology is one branch, but there's other sort of physics we do. So anyone with a physics sort of interest or yeah. background, that, that's really good. But as Richie said, the, the, the key thing now is computers. All the research we do, all the data collection needs knowledge of computers and ability to keep them running. So it'd be nice to have people with that. But People from so many backgrounds yeah. end, end up involved yeah. in volcanology. Yeah. I, I, I'll tell you, when I started out, just to, just, to, just to say, even, even if you're not a science student, I mean, you have to do science in the end, because this is a, an, an applied yeah, science. She, she, she said but chemistry is not her friend. Huh? Hello? She said chemistry was not her friend. Right, no, no, but what I'm saying is that even if you were, my, my part to come to this was, was I was an art student. It's, I did up until I, I went to what to your levels, I wasn't really doing science. So you can swap, you could you could switch. But you have to do science. So the basic science is so if it's not physics, it's it's if it's not chemistry, it can be maths, physics, you know, all the other sciences would be relevant. Geography, you know, but you can't you can't hear it from that because a lot of it is is physics and maths based. So so what, what Rod said to physics and that kind of thing is really studying the earth and looking at it as a physical system. So anything to do with that would be relevant. So if chemistry is not your friend, that's fine. You could you could get into a different aspect of it. All right. Another question. Good morning, guys. Could Mr. Robertson please confirm if there was a 1971-72 eruption? My reason for this is persons younger than myself are arguing that there was never a 71-72 eruption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, <laughs> someone, even someone 50 years of age is doubting me. Even reporters okay. are mentioning that 71-72 era. Uh, thanks for well, your advance. I Yes, there was. Unequivocally, there was a dome that came up before 1971. There was a crater lake. And in 71, late 71, uh, a mass of rock came up, just like the dome that grew. And it formed an island that, that went on growing and went on being active until 1972. And in fact, a lot of that was destroyed in 79, but a little bit was left back. Um, it would be interesting to see. I suspect all of it is gone now after this uh, event. But, but you could have... Prior to this eruption, I could have taken that person up to the volcano and showed them a piece of the rock that came out in 1971 to prove that there was a 71. So there was a 71, 72 eruption, an effusive eruption without any explosive component. Another question. How, li how likely are pyroclastic flows to reach into the orange zone areas uh, such as Chateau Belair? Unlikely, um, but... Why, not the flows themselves, there's a possibility that, that the surges could get into those areas, and that's precisely why there are areas that are, that are on the fringe of the red, any area on the fringe of the red zone, so, sort of on the boundary, depending on where you are, and certainly um, pits used and to certain extent trackable areas on the fringe, mm -hmm. you have the possibility for surges, not necessarily the, the flows are the main sort of bulky part of the material that stays in the valleys and probably doesn't go far, the surges could could sweep across the, the sea and, and sort of wrap around the headland and get there. So there's a, it's unlikely, but there's, it's not impossible. Um, so that's why you, you can have the air in the side of caution and, and move away from those areas. Um, particularly like, like now when the, when the valleys are filled up and they have the paraclastic flows to go. There's someone asking about azomite. What is the difference between azomite <laughs> or ash or is it is the same thing? <laughs> Okay, you're right. Yeah, okay, azomite. Well, somebody asked about it last time. Okay. And I then went online and checked because it was not a term, a geological term, I know. And I discovered it's actually a name, it's, a, it's probably a commercial name given to some volcanic materials that is, that is mined in Utah, was it? In the US. Yeah, in the US. And it is used commercially. So I'm not sure what kind of volcanic material it is, but the name azomite is not necessarily a I don't think it's a geologic name. It's a name that they came up with to describe this volcanic material. It's, uh, I'm not sure exactly what kind of volcanic material. So it's essentially, that's what it is. So it's, it's, a, it's a material that's used. Mm -hmm. um, I think they sell it and commercially it's, 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 it's sold as something that they added it to, to, to make soil rich and stuff like that. 
and they gave it a name and it's, it's commercially out. But maybe maybe at the end of this eruption we could have something called right, it's a super it's a super it's a super because we have we have materials that we're producing from the volcano that is potentially quite useful and good and rich for soil. It's just that you know you have to you have to know to manipulate it. Right now it's it's bad, it's it's covering everything, it's destroying things, but in time that's why siblings have such rich fertile land partly because of the, the volcanic ash. It's good. So you know, again, you know, I'm giving all these, I've, I've given the idea about a commercial person could go and scoop up the ass and use it later on, you know, maybe somebody could start getting into how they could commercially make use of the ash that we, that's right now is a nuisance. You'll have to do some research, but often. We have a question coming in here from our Magic Jack. Uh, hello, good morning, welcome to our uh, Ing Lasso Fair Mornings edition. <laughs> hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. I think we lost that caller. Yeah. Uh, we right. have we ha we even have another an, another technical question. Is our volcano okay. of kimberlite eruption or, or um, mm -hmm. releasing kimberlite rocks? Yeah. Okay. I see you laughing. Yeah. No, no, because I, I no no we we don't realize that we, we have to start preparing better for these programs. You guys are coming up with some serious <laughs> questions, but. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll see what I can do. I, I know vaguely about Kimberlite and, and stuff like that, but yeah. Another question. Can you uh, comment <laughs> on air, the quality as a result of the eruption, and how long will we be experiencing ash in the local air quality? How long you might be experiencing ash? Um, well, there's two things with the ash. You, to get the ash, you have to have the volcano erupting explosively and producing ash. Um, and I guess it was such an eruption produced most of the ash that you have around. Um, the later ones have gone off the sea. Now, we don't have an answer, therefore, you don't have the source to produce the ash. But we do have a lot of ash on the ground. Um, the only problem with the ash is that until it goes out to sea or until it walks into the soil, it, it gets remobilized. So while we may not be producing ash, we're not currently producing ash because you're not in the explosive phase, at least at present, you, you ash to be a problem unless you wash it off and get into the, into the system. I don't really monster the ways of dealing with the ash. But, but so it could go on for as long as the volcano is erupting explosively. Yeah. But it could go on for longer if you don't get rid of the ash. We the have ash. a call on the line. Hello, good morning. Welcome to our Ying Lasso Fair Mornings edition. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Go right ahead, good please. Good morning, Doc. Morning. Um, I've heard that there were other volcanoes in, on mainland St. Vincent. Were there ever any existing that became dormant? Right. Well, we, we tend to use the term, are they alive or dead? So yes, there have been a number of volcanoes, and St. Vincent is volcanic, so it's built from volcanoes. Um, and the volcanoes that are in the south, apart from Sufre, we consider now dead. So you might call it dormant, I, I say it's dead. It's not. Don't want something like it to wake up again. I say it's dead because I don't think it will wake up again. It's gone. So you're talking about all the mountains that stretch from Mount St. Andrew, Mount Brisbane, Grand Banan, Petit Banan, um, Richmond Peak. All of those were volcanic, were are volcanic, and those erupted in the past. They know we don't think anything will happen to them. They're, they're dead because the rocks are too old, things are still yeah. up. There's no, there's no sort yeah. of heat beneath those yeah. volcanoes. The only Sorts of heat is, is beneath the superior. And it's probably the case that it, it's the same source of heat that's actually mm -hmm. moved around. Yeah. So at one point, this source of heat was beneath um, St. Vincent's Mount St. Andrew. Mount St. Andrew, 56, oh, yeah. I should remember. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so the, at the moment, the, the, the heat is beneath the last yeah. and, and this is the same of all well, the yeah. um, Caribbean islands except Dominica. They all tend to have one volcano. And a number of old volcanoes, yeah, yeah. which are, you know, totally dead. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, was was the Grenadines um, divided due to volcanic eruption? I read that in a. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. Well, the, the, one of the lesser Antilles, the Eastern Caribbean, uh, was originally volcanic. In some cases, like in the Grenadines, the volcanism is so old that it has been covered over, in a sense, by marine deposits um, because of sea level change. So, at one point. The, the, the sea level around the Caribbean was, was higher than it is now, so then coral developed. But if you core into the islands, if you go to all these rocks, you'll find 
even the ones that uh, appear to be now limestone and not volcanic, they have at their core volcanic materials. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you very much thank for you. your question. Uh, did, did we get the Kimberlite? Kimberlite yeah. What was the Kimberlite question? Yeah. You had a Kimberlite question. A Kimberlite question. Uh, uh, yeah, that question was, um, is our volcano of a Kimberlite eruption or releasing ah. Kimberlite rocks? Can it? No. Can it? Okay, that, that's an easy one. No, no. Kimberlite um, are associated with um, older systems than this, much older and much sort of bigger systems. Um, Often in continents and things like that. So ours are island art volcanoes. You, we don't have anything like that. I think the person thinking about the fact that in Kimberlite, in Kimberlite um, volca volcanoes that are associated with Kimberlites are, are usually often ones that have things like diamonds and stuff like that. Right. We, we unfortunately don't have. No. We're not that lucky. We wish. We wish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I know we 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 had a little. Um, we know the, the, the negatives of the ash fall yeah. and, and all that. What what positive can we take out of the ash fall? Somebody asking, is it good yeah. for building infrastructure and mixing with cement and that kind of stuff? Well, well I'll, I'll later on tell you about what they do in Montserrat because they're using it. Yeah, the, the main thing in Montserrat is they, they sell it and export it to other islands yeah. for construction because um, it is so much better than, sea, than beach sand for construction. Yeah. But the thing in Montserrat is they're using stuff that's been brought down by lahars, so it has been sorted to some extent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they have a major industry. Every day, almost, there's parties taking the material away. So, so that's the, the main use. I know the University of West Indies in, in Mona were looking at whether it could be used in road construction. I, I don't know what happened with that, but we sent samples to them. We've also had people making tourist trinkets you know, you can get little things made of the ash, or yeah. you can sell bottles of ash to tourists. I mean, it's not happening yet, but you will have a tourist industry here, and people will be interested in what's going on. Yeah. So, so you know, it's easy. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, ash and yeah. that. Because there's been a lot of attention and yeah. eruption, and people want to have, you know, yeah. souvenirs. But it's, it's really up to the entrepreneurs. It's like that stuff in Utah. I've forgotten its name already. Um, Azamar. 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 I suspect that's more a marketing opportunity than anything else. They, they had a material that had been deposited there yeah. a long time ago by a volcano. It was usable, and then they came up with a nice name that makes it marketable. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really up to the, the, the entrepreneurs to see, to see what they can, they can do. All right, questions are still coming, but we have to wrap up the program this morning. Uh, I understand that... Uh, Professor, you'll be leaving shortly and you'll be handing over yeah. once again to Rod. Yes, I am. I am. In fact, that's why you've seen Rod from now on. <laughs> so that people will get refamiliarized with him. Yes, it's, it's come that time again where we rotate in and out people, you know. Yeah, it, it's necessary in volcanic eruptions to do that. And Rod himself will be rotated out in about a week's time. Two weeks, two weeks time. Yeah. And TC also, and we have new people coming. We have, actually have some two new persons here then. Um, others will come as the eruption continues. You have to rotate in. So I'll, I'll be back, but I'll, yeah, I'll, be, I'll be well. We both will be back at different times. Um, but yeah, I'll be, I'll be leaving at the end of the week. Um, but I'll be, you know, we we both involved in the wider group. Um, we we watch and follow what's happening closely and interact with people here in the group. Uh, before before Ron came here, he was one of the most active ones in the chat group um, about what was happening. And the same thing here. So we we're not. We're not physically here, but we're going to be here still um, and linked into the system. All right, gentlemen, let me thank you very much for being on the program this morning. And uh, thanks for the continued update and uh, uh, valuable information. Thank you so much and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. 107.5, 90.7 FM, www.nbc.